Justice Stevens' comments on the Second Amendment take us right to the big announcement by New York, former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. He's giving $50 million for gun control. Is that significant? I mean, when you compare that to the NRA raising $256 million in 2012? The NRA, has, the NRA has three or four million members, actual people, Americans, who care a lot about this issue. The idea that Mike Bloomberg is going to buy gun control measures by throwing money around, I think that's kind of ridiculous. Well, does money get members, Don? Well, but the focus here is on uh, getting ordinary Americans who support strong background checks uh, to become actively involved. He's, he's got moms, he's got mayors. There are millions of Americans who I believe will be part of this grassroots campaign for common sense is, is gun the, safety laws. Is he the right face for this, Jeff Sessions? Absolutely not. And that, <laughs> that is the exact question, because during the Senate debate on this, in the months after Sandy Hook, everyone thought this was some type of background checks would pass the Senate, but it is too easy for politicians out there to say, oh, that's the New York City mayor. Plus so perhaps he's the he soda ban his, mayor. Right. Oh. Perhaps he well. should give his money and someone else should be the front of this. But look, I mean, I think that uh, uh, the NRA, the real people, you're right on that. Well, he is the best, and by that I mean the worst face for gun control. And believe me, my friends at the NRA high fived when they heard about this. Going after the NRA is a very odd thing. The NRA represents law-abiding gun owners like myself. They don't represent criminals. They don't even represent gun manufacturers. That's the NSSF. So why Mayor Bloomberg is turning his figurative guns on people like me when there are criminals out there seems a very strange way to go about uh, reducing gun crime. And his, his efforts on this issue is going have been measurable criminals. failures. They've he, been failures, Donna. Look, I don't but, care what his face looks like. I think, first of all, he should be praised for what he's doing with his money. He is trying to to stop gun violence in America. Seventy percent of domestic abusers now can get firearms uh, because there's no serious background checks. He's trying to save lives. And if saving lives is a bad thing, well, God knows. But, Donald, look at his efforts. Trouble. Mayors Against Illegal Guns has crumbled because he duped mayors into thinking they were actually going to fight illegal guns. And when they all found out, actually, they were going after law-abiding gun owners, they said, that's not what I want to be a part of. His efforts are duplicitous, and they're measurably failing. But failing. they're expanding. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to move to another standoff instead of this standoff we have right here. If, if you all watched Nevada this week, there was a mm. pretty remarkable mm. scene. You saw militia members standing off against the Bureau of Land Management. Bureau of Land Management went in, took a couple of he hundred heads of cattle from a landowner out there who had not pay paid grazing fees, $1 million. Look at this. These, these are the militias standing off. The BLM backed off. This is what Harry Reid, the senator from Nevada, said about this. These people who hold themselves out to be patriots are not. They're nothing more than domestic terrorists. I repeat, what went on up there is domestic terrorism. Domestic terrorism, Bill Crystal. I'm not sure I'd use that phrase, but the, uh, he's no hero, Clive and Bundy, and the people who rallied to threaten force against uh, law enforcement agents doing what they were authorized to do by courts and by their superiors are no heroes either. There are ways to change the law. He went through court, I, I gather, this gentleman, for about 20 years. He kept losing court cases. If, if, if the federal government controls too, many, uh, too much land in Nevada and the West, which they do, there are ways to change that legally, too. But, but what about the precedent that's set here? The, the BLM backed off. I mean, we don't know what they're going to do Thank, next, yeah. but they, they backed off in this situation. I, first of all, that is that was the right thing to do to to try to you know simmer things down. Remember, mm -hmm. this is the 19th anniversary of of the Oklahoma bombing. Um, so this notion that uh, Mr. Bundy has no other recourse but violence is absolute anti-government violence is absolutely wrong. He's been waging his battle for for two decades. He's lost. Everybody else is paying their grazing fees. Uh, he should pay his fees as well. Oh, I think so. We what are you be reluctant to compare? Bundy to Timothy McVeigh. And I think what, what Harry Reid said was despicable. But I do agree with Bill. There's a role for civil disobedience. I'm not sure this is the best quality example of it. Um, this is a guy who, who didn't start out to, 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 to start a revolution. He just didn't want to pay his grazing fees. And there are better ways to go about it than uh, Just didn't want to pay standoff. grazing fees about a million dollars worth of grazing fees. No, that's fees. right. Yeah. That's right. Are everybody else paying their fees? Yeah. Sure. I, I, I want to turn to Ukraine. You, you saw the headlines this morning in the New York Times. 
in Cold War Echo, Obama's strategy writes off Putin. White House looks, <laughs> looks past Ukraine to restrict Russian influence. Jeff, tell me what you've learned about what the White House is thinking about Vladimir Putin in light of what's happening in Ukraine. There's no question that uh, that is uh, on the mind of the White House now. Peter Baker at The New York Times wrote that. He worked in Moscow. He's a Moscow expert. And he is right. This is not how President Obama intended this to go. He talked about, I remember it well during his campaign, uh, you know, about forging a new relationship with uh, Russia. Obviously, that's not possible. So you know, they are not uh, icing out Putin or saying that we'll never have a relationship. But they know they will not have a constructive relationship. And the White House is not pushing back against that story at all this morning. They know. You know but they are saying that sanctions more sanctions are sort of in the wings, if you will, more economic sanctions. That's how the only thing that they believe they can do. But, Bill Christo, a little hard to write off the Russian leader, isn't it? I mean, it's, sometimes it's not really your choice what happens in foreign policy. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. I'm thrilled if the White House is studying what Harry Truman did in 1947, 1948, which is what the article suggests. But what Harry Truman did in 1947 and 48 is help anti-communists in Greece and Turkey, the Berlin airlift, the tough sense of sending tons of troops back to Europe to guarantee Europe's uh, ability, free Europe, Western Europe's ability to defend itself against the Soviet Union, and eventually a huge defense buildup. That was the Cold War. If President Obama goes in that direction, uh, more power to him. But I don't, I don't think he will. What, what else could he do? God, I, well, this is remarkable. I mean, it seems like after Russia has played us on Syria, on Iran, on Crimea, finally the White House does so. Well, well, now we're in a fight. Okay, now you've gone too far. And I think the mistake all along was thinking that we could be friends to begin with. It's a mistake that Bush made. It's a mistake that Hillary Clinton made. And it's a mistake that President Obama clearly continued to make. I hope now we're finally taking uh, Russia and, and Putin more seriously. Well, well first, we've got to solve Ukraine, and that may take a little we'll more see. effort here. Thanks to all of you. We'll be right back with more.